Hello and welcome to another true crime story on my channel. My name is Miyani Mervis and this is Star Reality TV. Today's crime location is Fiesta Town, Lagos, Nigeria. I will be bringing to you the tragic story of Cynthia Ozukogo, the young promising lady that was lured into a hotel and eventually killed by her new Facebook acquaintance. Cynthia Ozukogu was one of four children. She was actually the only daughter of her parents. She obtained her bachelor's degree in the English language in the Nasawara State University. She then proceeded in picking up a job at MTN. But because Cynthia was a former model, she really had passion for fashion. She soon resigned her job from MTN and decided to open up her own fashion boutique, Dress Code. While running her fashion boutique, Cynthia picked up a master's degree program in public administration in the same university where she had obtained her bachelor's degree. At the age of 25, this young lady had actually achieved a lot. She was described as hardworking and quite industrious. Five months prior to July 2012, Cynthia accepted a friend request from Juan Echezun Namuabufo and later accepted another friend request from his cousin Elechuku Ejike. What Cynthia did not know was the fact that this man had been stalking her for a while before asking her a friend request on Facebook. Mwabufo told Cynthia that he was actually an undergraduate student in the Lagos State University and he equally deals in fashion clothing and other fashion accessories. They began constantly chatting on Messenger. As time went on, one before gained Cynthia's trust by constantly uploading pictures and videos of some fashionable things or goods that Cynthia also had interest in selling in her boutique. As time went on, one before convinced Cynthia that he had business partners in Lagos that would give her goods or to stock up her boutique at a very relatively low price than the price that her business counterpart or her supplier from US normally gives her. And to make the offer more tempting, one before told Cynthia that he was willing to pay, book her a flight from Abuja to Lagos and equally pay for her lodging bills just so she could come to Lagos, get her goods and return back to Abuja. Cynthia accepted the offer told her mother that she would be going to Lagos to get goods to stock up her fashion shop. On the 21st of July 2012, Cynthia left Abuja for Lagos. Little did she know that she was embarking on a journey of no return. She landed at the Motala Mohammed International Airport where she was picked up by Echeziona and AGK, took her to the hotel, one hotel in Lakeview Estate in Festac town. Cynthia called her mother and told her that she has arrived safely and she was actually in the hotel waiting for this so-called businessman to come so she could get her goods and probably she will be heading back as soon as she finish her, finishes her business deal. Unfortunately, that will be the last time Cynthia's mother will get to hear from her daughter. Before Cynthia arrived at the hotel, the two men had already pre-dropped the drink they offered her. While she was sipping this gin and expecting the so-called or the supposed business partner to come so she could tell them what stuff she would be needing, the two men expected that this drug should be should act immediately as soon as Cynthia had begun consuming the gin. But unfortunately, the drug did not work as they had anticipated and they soon began growing frustrated and impatient and decided to show their true colors. One before an AGK pounced on Cynthia tied her both hands and feet stuffed close into her mouth and began demanding to her to give all the money she came with for the business trip. Cynthia told them that all what they had taken from her is all the money she came with, that she doesn't carry large sums of money around. One before an AGK had anticipated that Cynthia was going to carry large sums of money for the goods she was going to buy. But she was a kind of business lady that she really did not carry large sums of money around. She walked around with, she go to the market with her checkbook and when her shopping is done or when she's done getting good stuff for her boutique, she pays via her checkbook. The two men were so frustrated and angered that they had put so much into bringing Cynthia from Abuja and 
lodging her and taking so much time for many months they have controlled her and knew that they were going to hit it big like scamming a lot of millions from her but yeah they were really disappointed that Cynthia did not come with a lot of money they beat the poor lady up tortured her and finally raped her and strangled her to death one before an AGK slept with Cynthia's dead body in the hotel room when they woke up the next morning they unfriend Cynthia on Facebook took all her personal belongings her three Blackberry phones her national ID her international passport her driver's license and jewelries when they left the, the hotel room more before went down to the reception and told the receptionist that he is actually going to the ATM to redraw some cash that they plan to spend another day Referring to Cynthia, he told the receptionist that his girlfriend is still in the room and he will be back soon. He left. A couple of hours later, Mwabufo called the receptionist and told her that he is not coming back to the hotel, that the girl in the room is dead. They should go and clean up the mess in very clear terms. The receptionist was confused and called the hotel management they went into the room not and tried to enter the room to no avail and they finally forced their they like they forced themselves in and they were met with a grisly discovery Cynthia was lying there in a pool of her own blood gut and she was beaten beyond recognition the police were alerted but when they came to the crime scene it was actually like a dead and they really had nothing to work on she had no identification paper on her meaning there was no way to call any family member or friend. So they took Cynthia's deceased body to the morgue and deposited it there, hoping for anyone to come or any family to come to the police station and file the missing person's report. Back in Abuja, Cynthia's mother has been placing frantic calls, hoping to hear from her daughter. It has been like six days plus, and she has kept trying, but the phone was switched off. On the seventh day, Mwabufo picked up the phone and told Cynthia's mom that Cynthia has been kidnapped and he is demanding the sum of 20 million naira. And if they want Cynthia alive, they should send the money. Cynthia's mother asked if Cynthia was alive. They said yes. And when she requested to talk with her daughter, they told her that she was really sick and she can't talk on phone now. She grew so frustrated and with so much fear in her, she decided to make a trip from Abuja to Lagos to find out what was really happening. When she arrived Lagos, she decided that Cynthia's phone, last phone record should be pinned to know the exact location where her phone was last seen. It was in Festa town. There she went to the Festa police station and, told, and filed a missing person's report. One thing leading to another, since it was the same neighborhood, since they finally got to the morgue to identify Cynthia's deceased body, her mother confirmed that that was her daughter. Her worst fears had actually come to reality. Exactly one month after the incident, with the help of CCTV footage from the hotel and phone records, the police finally made an arrest. More before an AGK, the Facebook friends were arrested. Osita Oji, the pharmacist that sold the drug to AGK and Wabufo was equally arrested and AGK Nonso, AGK's younger brother who helped in selling Cynthia's three blackberries food, all four men including other two people they were arrested, the driver that normally carried them around each time they are going to for theft or robbery activities, they were all arrested and charged to court. While in court, a lot of victims came up and claiming these men have been doing this to them. Like, this is something that they normally do. They, this is the reason why the police gave a theory that they never had the intentions in, of killing Cynthia. Maybe they were just frustrated because they had anticipated to get more money from her, but they were disappointed. That is why they molested and killed her that day. Exactly five years after Cynthia's death, in 2017, there was a verdict. Mwabufo and AGK were found guilty of all charges and were sentenced to death by hanging. Why Osita and Nonso were acquitted?
Her mother, with the pain of losing her only daughter in the most gruesome way, has taken it upon herself to be sensitizing youths, to be mindful of the kind of friends they accept or the people they, the kind of people they meet up, especially those they meet on social media. Her wish is for no one to go the way her daughter did. This story had actually gone on to inspire a movie titled Mother in the Prime Suits. Thanks all for watching and this is the sad story of Cynthia Ozukogo. I pray she find peace in her death and a lot of people are so happy because justice was finally safe. If you haven't subscribed, please do and turn on the notification bell so that each time I upload a new video, you will be notified and until my next video, so long.